I've always really enjoyed Ryan Long's comedy. I think it's very, very funny. But increasingly, it is taking on the character of prophecy. And you, you've seen this before with his sketches about, I don't know, the vaccines or about COVID or about wokeism or, or whatever. But he did one that was really on the money. Ryan did a masterclass on a neocon defense co contracting war criminal nation building type of individual. And I don't know, like five minutes later, masterclass announces that it is in fact hosting a class with Hillary Clinton. This, I don't know how, unless he has a crystal ball, he could have known this. Ryan, thank you for coming on. Hey, yeah, what would she say? She's uh, in the trailer. She was doing the speech that like would have been. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's like a dude, yeah, you get married and then like the divorce goes and you go, you give a class on marriage and you go, you know, this is the speech I almost gave <laughs> at my wedding before we broke This would up. have been my 50th anniversary speech, <laughs> that uh, the toast yeah, yeah, yeah. at our party. Yeah, we broke up after two years, fairly <laughs> dramatically, actually. But had we made it to 50 years, this is the kind of stuff I would have been saying. You know, this brings up, actually, one of my favorite sketches that you did recently that it was hilarious, but it got to a really important philosophical and anthropological point that men do not appreciate. It was on the phrase, one of my least favorite phrases in the English language, happy wife, happy life. Yeah, there's a base. And the, the gist was the guy that just consistently says happy wife, happy life. And by the end of it, you're just like 100 percent a simp because obviously, yeah, I mean, there's obviously a point underneath where any proper working relationship with like a person or, you know, a wife or whatever there you're going to have to um, argue to some degree. But I find that what people do, dudes, they go they'll like bottle it all in and just mm -hmm. take it, take it, take it. And then just blow up and they go, I'm putting my foot down. <laughs> and, th and then you got to make some big stink about nothing when really it was a hundred issues at the same time where it's like, if you just no, just be kind of cool all the time. Be like, Hey, what's going on here? You know, this, you have like a fight about something, but you let it go. And then it's like the girl that uh, says, Hey, you can, I don't want you going out with your friends on Tuesday and you go, all right, whatever. And then, you know, she's like, no Thursday. And then by the end of it, you're like, she goes, uh, I, I, I need you to come because uh, my, mo my mom's getting married again. And I need you to come to the wedding. And you go, I am going out. And that you end up making a stink of it, something ridiculous. It's because I have my wing night and I will change for nothing. You pushed me to the edge. Uh, this is it. If you, I am, I am putting my knuckles on the floor and dragging because you don't need to be a knuckle dragger. The, 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 just to your point, the phrase is not even true. If, if happy wife, happy life means uh, appease your wife in all of her unreasonable and disordered demands and desires, that will, that will not make your life happy. It won't make her life happy either. It's just, and uh, no. the guys who tell me happy wife, happy life, they're generally not the happiest guys. This is even why. Or they have awesome wives. Yeah. Like, or it's a dude that his wife kind of rules and he's, you know, happy wife, happy life. You're like, well, yeah, easy to use it. You're to say, yeah. like, she's pretty reasonable. Yeah, you, have so, a, you, you don't have that battle axe, you know, that I've got hanging around. This is why I'm I'm skeptical of man caves even. Look, some man caves, they're very beautiful. I like, you know, they. some of my friends have incredible man caves, so I, I like that. But the idea of the man cave <laughs> is that you, 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 you don't have any place in your house. You you have to go to a subterranean dungeon so that you can watch football and eat wings or whatever because your <laughs> your wife will just banish you if you try to What happened to a man's home is his castle? You know what the I always it's always like a matching thing even with employees because I have like some buddies that are pushover guys. Mm. You know, whatever certain people it's like it's not always the bad characteristic. A lot of times it's why people like them because they're, you know, kind of down for whatever, right? <laughs> but in this in like those kind of scenarios and people are always like, "Well, you need to put your foot down, like don't take shit from her." It's like the truth is, if you're the type of guy that's always, you know, agreeable like that, what you really need is to find like a nice person that doesn't take advantage of people like that. <laughs> You know what I mean? I see some of these like crazy girls. I'm like, I think I can handle that because I'm down. If I'm like the type of guy that's like, I'm down to argue. If you want to argue, let's argue. Yeah. But if you're not, if you're the type of guy that's not, you need to find a person that's like a 
that's not going to take advantage of you nonstop. That's right. Rather than totally change your own personality, you just need Doesn't to work. not marry a predator. Yeah, that this is, well, you know, there's this weird thing, right? I was just talking to my friend, Michael Anton, who's a great uh, political philosopher and writer over at Claremont. And he pointed out that we're living in kind of upside down world right now in this very unprecedented time where everything uh, that is is supposedly beautiful is actually ugly. And you look at it on the billboards and ev- you know, even lingerie models now. You look at a billboard in Times Square and it's like the ugliest, fattest, most grotesquely naked person. Well, they kind of have no chill in this country, right? It's, it went straight mm. from... Uh, there's no, there's no moderation. It went from every model looks like a twig and she's puking out breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, you know what I mean? I got to go throw up because I ate a grape to like, I'm modeling the biggest fee- piece of fabric in the history of the world. <laughs> <laughs> there's no in between, no balance. I guess we're just very extreme. Cause I was trying to think, you know, it, it hit me with, it hit me with the marriages because we went from this world in which a man's home is his castle and, you know, man is the ruler of the, of the roost to if a man, a man ever expresses an opinion in his home that he, he's basically a, a psychopath patriarch and needs to be booted to the street. And same thing Not with comedy. Not my home. Yeah. <laughs> in, in comedy now, we're told that, you know, jokes are not their jokes are not funny, but nat nat and that woman, the least funny woman of all time is that's she's the funniest woman ever. And that tragedy actually is the new comedy. And then it, it just got me thinking about the the billboards and like even the buildings, you know, uh, hideous, brutalist buildings are beautiful buildings. And all the beautiful classical architecture in D.C. basically has to be knocked down. It's like I sort of live like a weird pirate life and a lot of it comes to like normalizing outliers where it's like, you know, that's actually the good thing. But it never it doesn't really help because even if you think of Nanette, like, yeah, I guess they like pushed it. But it also that created like such a backlash what it always does. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you know, mm-hmm. that show. OK, there's this show Love Island. Mm-hmm. It's like girl show. Right. And it's like <laughs> a bunch of hot people. Right. And so they've always they, on these shows that are essentially a bunch of hot people. and They pick the people. They've been trying to introduce like, you know, non-traditionally attractive people and like pretty decent looking for normal. But so they'll have like supermodel, 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 Walmart customer, supermodel. Right. And then so the dudes don't want to get in trouble. So you see the guys, they kind of go up and they go, you know, everyone was good. I felt that I had a bit more of attraction with the five supermodels. Got to be honest. (laughs) So. It, it, you're like, who is this helping? And then every year a girl like kills herself because they get bullied on the internet. And the show kind of is like, bullying's bad. But also it's like if you said a 12 year old was like pretty good at basketball, right? <laughs> and then you put them in the NBA and then every day you're like, he's the best player in the NBA. Everyone would be like, yo, I hate this 12. You know what I mean? And yeah. all of a sudden everyone's like talking trash on the 12 year old. And then the kind of idea is like, why are you guys being mean? It's like, no, because they're mad that this thing's getting like pushed in their face. So I don't know if you try to, just like upset like reality too much. I think it generally kind of backlashes. Even when you're talking about the you can't say jokes and stuff, like the truth is like there's probably more of a like a, a want for people to hear like wild stuff when you do comedy clubs because of that. Hmm. You know, because people feel like maybe you can't say it at jobs or whatever. Whereas probably the in the 90s or whatever, when it was like most accepted, there was almost like a a genre of like the wild comedy, like we're saying outrageous stuff. It was almost gross. Like it's hmm. kind of like when you do like an edgy show and yeah. they go, this is the like edgy we're saying everything. And then you like your instinct there is like, I don't want to say it now. Right. That's gross. <laughs> no, well, this is, that was what Norm Macdonald did at the Bob Saget roast, right? Everyone was just yeah. saying all these filthy, disgusting anatomical things. And Norm gets up and does a joke about how Saget's head looked like cauliflower. And he was doing all these like Dean Martin roast jokes and it totally sub subverted thing. So actually that, yeah, that, that's the exact, that's like the perfect reference. It really is that. And that's the like mechanism. Cause he's, you know, he's saying the whole thing is it's the funniness stems from in that genre, like the opposite of what expected. And once it's like really expected, it just feels disgusting to do. So, you know, I was joking at the top about how you're Nostradamus and you keep kind of calling these things. I and, have had a few. Yeah. <laughs> well, but the, I think the, the reason for this is a pr- priest friend of mine from New York pointed out that prophets are not people who have a crystal ball and they predict the future. Prophets are just observing the world as it is, uh, while other people are imagining a world that no longer is. And so they're just observing reality. And then this seems like they're predicting the future because they're telling the truth in a world full of lies. So 
what does that mean for us? The fact that you, you seem to be predicting all of these things. Nostradamus, please tell me, what do we have to look forward to? Well, you, I think there is something to be said about, I, it, you, or you can maybe make it less important where you just say, hey, things are like moving in a direction. And then like the satire I do is like, I just do an extreme version of it. And then as long as we stay on that path, we'll right. get there. <laughs> you know what I mean? But in terms of like predicting, it, it, it's always like a predicting a stock market, right? Like on a trend, is this the top or is this, mm. you know, keep going? I would say, in my opinion, culturally, I, I remember to some degree, I was like switching on some of the things I was talking about in like around 2016. And then it felt like we went back a few years. Hmm. And I would say right now, culturally, we're sort of like we were here. Or I'm putting my hand where you can see it. <laughs> and then if there was a peak, it sort of went up and then back. So I feel like we're back, hmm. uh, you know, like 20% from the top right now. Like without Trump, it feels a little, a little calmer. People yeah. aren't as, you know, fired up in general. So it depends on what happens next, right? Like, does this go back down or does things get like fired up the way it is before? Like, I was loving the idea of just, you know, at peak, like how much you could just every family gathering, people are fighting. And I was loving the idea of just going up to a family gathering and you go, whatever people think, just show up and go, hey, who do you guys think's the bigger hero, George Floyd or Kyle Rittenhouse? Anyway, got to go to the bathroom and just... <laughs> Just trying to get people fired. There's this, there's this big chasm between what we're being told is real on this. You know, George Floyd is the greatest hero, or whatever. You know, there's this great chasm between what we're being told by the whole establishment and the the reality of it. And you, you see this reflected in poll numbers. You see, you know, Biden's at 38% and he's basically the most popular guy in his administration. Uh, uh, Kamala Harris is at 27%, which is lower than, than Dick Cheney was after the Iraq war and after shooting a guy in the face. So it, this is historically low kind of stuff. And yet we're being told it's the most popular thing ever. It's the most wonderful thing. Pete Buttigieg, who's now being hailed as the, the next great presidential candidate, he was asked, hey, what are people supposed to do about gas prices? And he basically said, go buy a Tesla with a straight face. And and so what's the reaction, you know, what's the reaction when we're living in this kind of clown world from the propaganda of the ruling class? And yet we we still can look around and we still have eyes to see that that's not what's going on. Yeah, I feel like every every president is just like the 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 like team that likes him puts out press releases about how much he's killing it. And then the end, because I remember that with you could say the same thing with Trump, where yeah. you know what I mean? The left would be like, look here, we did a poll and actually it's negative five percent people like him. And then people will be like, and then you go and it's like everyone from you know all these states loves him. But Biden doesn't have that's one thing that's like interesting with people that are like commentary that like hate Biden. You kind of it's not the same as Trump because they're kind of like, I, you know, he's the worst or whatever. But I feel like he doesn't have people defending that. So mm. it's not so cut and dry. Like mm. there's not even really people that are really left wing. They're just like, I'm just like a Biden head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my, you know what I mean? Like, does that exist? I think even people that like were super liberal are kind of like, you know, maybe like some 60 year old kind of Upper West Side types. But I think in general, there's no 25 year old this all in on Biden, no matter what you're kind no, of political. No, we're in the, Bi- I don't even know what the version of the MAGA hat for Biden would be, you know, it, it, I like make. It's, no, it's like a nightcap. <laughs> <laughs> just wearing, just these young people wearing blue nightcaps to express their support <laughs> of Biden. You don't see it. And, and actually in the, in the polling, this is left-wing polls now, of Democrats, only about 37% even want him to be the nominee going forward. So you don't, you don't know who's going to come up. So then I, I have to ask your expert opinion. So you kind of just before, I, so I find whenever it gets like that, then you notice all the infighting between the sides. Like, I feel like all the left-wing people are fighting with each other and all the right-wing people are fighting with each other a little right. bit now. Mm. Don't you, kinda, haven't you noticed that totally. like more in the last four months? That's like kind of always what happens, right? It was like so clear who was, you know, on which side or whatever. And then once it became wishy-washy, everyone kind of looks at, it's like the, imagine like being in a church and then like no one's paying attention to you anymore. And then you're kind of like, she's having sex without marriage. <laughs> like All these, see all these people start arguing with each other. And then the, the left wing people are kind of like, this guy doesn't even, he's not even a communist enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This guy, man, he's not even wearing the hammer and sickle. This is no good. Well, uh, this, yeah. so what I, what I need to know from you in your expert opinion in comedy is Donald, it seems to me Donald Trump was a very funny president. I think he was probably the funniest president. Dude, have you seen his like stuff, the, the press releases? They're, 
It's not the one that he released the other day, dude. I they're so funny. He came out with one. It was just like, just want to say that people at the view are a bunch of slobs. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> And he goes, some, it was like the McCain's daughter. And he goes, you know, her, and, uh, her dad like made me do the world's longest funeral of all time. And oh, no. it, it was like, <laughs> it was great. And the fact that he's like writing it down and putting it out a press release is like even funnier. The, the fact I remember there was one time he was at a state dinner. He was he was having dinner with with the queen and. He sent out a tweet back in those days when he was still on Twitter. He sent out a tweet at what would have been about 1.30 in the morning, his time, after this beautiful dinner with the royal family, in which he called Bette Midler a washed-up psycho. He's <laughs> out of control. <laughs> so I think, okay, I think I think Trump is probably the, the funniest, best comedic chops president we've ever had. No, Obama was funny. You think Obama was funny? Obama was really funny. Yeah, it was kind of like... They both they both were kind of, uh, you know, could have been TV presenters, you know, mm. or I guess Trump was. But like, no, Obama was uh, comedically like uh, mm. very high level. That's like a, that's why, you know, Obama had everyone who was they liked him the way that, right. you know, people that like Trump like Trump because he was like a guy everyone kind of like wanted to be like he was cool and he was funny. <laughs> He did have that line about the Predator drones. I thought that was pretty funny. He did that. I do remember he did that bit uh, for one of the dinners where he acted as Daniel Day Lewis acting as Barack Obama. I thought that was that was pretty funny too. But so then <laughs> looking forward, who is the funniest presidential candidate that we could look at for 2024? I know that you said I, I don't really know them that well. Uh but the the I, I remember I met Andrew Yang at the stand and he's kind of I always thought it's funny that uh he was he, his whole thing is like, you know, wearing the math pin and like kind of nerdy. And then when I saw him, he was all like, cool. He's all like, yeah, what's up, man? Like, he, he's like a New York cool kid. <laughs> really? I didn't realize that that he was like different in real life. But the um, Buttigieg, I just remember, it is kind of what you said, where they were always, it seemed like every blog was like 10 reasons why he's so sick. And they're like, he has a slingshot. He skateboards. Like, <laughs> they're always kind of pushing they like he's actually pretty sick. Like that was kind of the vibe of of the push on Buttigieg. Um, so twenty twenty four. I guess that's there's kind of a couple years away. It seems like if the Democrats want to win, they need like someone that's very charismatic and kind of mm. uh, cool. I don't know the Republicans. I don't know. Is Trump running? You probably have a better pulse. So on that, I don't you? know. I mean, I, look. I think there are good candidates uh, on the right. I mean, De- DeSantis is running pretty hard. I think at this point. At the governor level, there's no one can touch him. He's by far the best setup for this. I think at the Senate level, no one can touch Ted Cruz. I don't just say it because we're buddies, but he, uh, you know, he's just got the infrastructure. He's done it before. He's kind of leading in the Senate, but sort of the rock. Yeah. Well, this is the thing you get these kind of, you know, random candidates would be thrown in, but then none of it really matters in my view, because if Trump runs, that's it, right? He just totally clears the field. No one's gonna. No one wants to become the He's next the right wing guy. I think. Right. Uh, yeah, who wants to be in that? Yeah, in and those if you crosses? do, it's is true. If you're like a Republican and you want to run, and Trump's running, you're like, ugh, I gotta go have him call my wife fat now. <laughs> Yeah, we're, like, we're talking about how I eat pizza. I mean, he Trump yeah. went on this whole thing about how uh, how disgusting Kasich looks when he eats a slice of pizza. No one wants to be in that. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I think everyone might be like. I, I guess there's a lot of people that are hardcore fans, but I think a, he. I think a lot of people even that were like Trump guys kind of don't like him as much because of like the vaccine stuff, right? No, but, well, that is. It is a weird spot that he's in because. A, a lot of conservative, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously extremely skeptical of all the vaccines and having to take the 17th Fauci ouchie, you know, just to get, because it's so, so I'm very on my effective. 45th, yeah. oh, well, so you, so you've almost got immunity. Yeah. You get just close. a few more and then you're pretty close. My buddy, I'll quote my buddy, Danny Polishuk's uh, thing, but because they're giving everyone free stuff and he goes, New York's like not the city to be giving people free ticket, free stuff for vaccines. And it was like, we're giving, Hey, we're giving out Yankees tickets now. And Danny said, uh, Oh, uh, uh, I guess I'm going to find out what it, what happens when you get 40 doses of this vaccine. <laughs> there, did you see in the in the Netherlands? There's a brothel that's giving a free 30 minute not. session. Yes, no. There's a yeah. I, I, you might be booking your tickets right now to Holland, but they there was this brothel was giving away a free 30 minute sex session 
if you took this shot, which <laughs> means right. that there are people now who are who are more Pfizer than man at this point, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dude, that stuff's so funny. But yeah, I think that, I don't know. I, I, to be honest, I think that like, it, who it would be probably even more tumultuous than before if he goes. So I don't know. We'll see. But yeah. uh, I I think right now it's like a little calmer. I was I, I think it's more likely that Trump has a podcast and he's selling like Patriot pills yeah. uh, for. <laughs> You know I would, what I mean? For the, I would too, for the top tier subscribers to like the truth social and he's selling like freedom water and stuff like that. And he's just making, just making more like truth social Trump. I think he quadrupled his net worth overnight with just like people <laughs> pumping that stock. So I don't know why. Just sending out one press because he can't even put it on Twitter. Well, I guess this, this raises the question about that then though. If the guy is not allowed on any social media, if the guy, if, if the SEC is looking into him and all the kind of bureaucratic arms are trying to shut this guy up, I would subscribe to his podcast, but are, are they, are they going to let him? Or are they going to let him do anything? Who knows? I have one, I have a, you know what a funny thing was? This was, so we were at this, like, uh, there's this thing in New York and one of our buddies, oh, it was like a fancy, like party kind of thing. It was like a bunch of rich people, right? I'm not really, like, I don't know these people, but I knew like one guy. And then uh, Trump, one of Trump's like daughters was there. And then I guess because of that, the secret service has to like travel with you. So we're at like a party and we had to go to get like white claws from like a bodega. And the secret service had to like follow us. <laughs> I was like, this is so, I guess they follow them forever. So we're at a bodega and there's like secret service guys outside of the bodega, making sure that we're safe when we're getting white claws. I was like, That's that is so, that is so embarrassing because uh, as a fellow, just absolute lover of white claws, I consider myself a white claw aficionado. Like if you're yeah. standing next to GI Joe, you know, and you go to the bodega to order your, and you order, you know, raspberry flavored hard seltzer, that can't, that can't make you feel very masculine. No, isn't that crazy? <laughs> that, that I didn't, I didn't realize that they all get it forever. And, and could you imagine if, if he does run again, could you imagine the, the riots. Can you imagine just if you think the, the no, people would have to like dust off their Molotov cocktails, like <laughs> people that, you know, left that life and just have like went back to their normal job and then mm -hmm. have to go back to the closet and be like, all right, we're rioting again. <laughs> dust off my Twitter fingers and getting into it. Again. So I don't know. <laughs> as far as like, it feels like that chapter's closed up a bit. And he, sh you know, he could, uh, it's like he's so you're so old like all these presidents yeah. are so old now it's like i think it's time to potentially do something else i think well it, it is hard if you if the if you're running against a guy for being 80 joe biden and then you're you, like look at and he's a bit younger he's like yeah look at this guy he's so old he's old. <laughs> I, I look at i'm only 79 as opposed to this old geezer Although Trump did have that line Hope when they asked a young candidate. <laughs> they, they, when they asked him about Biden's age, he did say they said, you know, he, he said, I'm not going to attack Biden for his age, you know. But all, look, all I know is I'm a I'm a young man. I'm a young, vibrant <laughs> man, and uh, certainly there's. That's the best. There's, there's obviously not a ton of youth or vibrancy out in most of the political landscape. But what's what's your, so you're in New York? You mentioned you're. you're he still believed in it too for sure. Like if Trump was like he's like writing this speech and he's like, dude, I'm like young as hell, and everyone's yeah. like, I don't know about that. He's like, what? Uh, you don't think I'm young? He's got dragon energy. Him and Kanye, they've got <laughs> these guys pumping through his veins. Now you, so you're yeah, you're yeah, in yeah. New York. You have yeah. You've stayed there. You've survived the smash and grabs and the peaceful arson and the de Blasio administration. I live in the, the East the East Village and it's like uh, it really has become like a, a pretty wild. Has it? Like, and when I used to I used to film these videos on the street. And at first it was like mostly normal people. But by the end, it was like the people that kind of just live there, like took over the park. And this is, this is, I, I said this on stage, but this is the argument that I heard a guy and a girl have. A guy and a girl were arguing, the girl goes to the guy and she goes, hey, I showed you the t's, now give me the McFlurry. And <laughs> <laughs> so these are the kind of deals that are taking place like outside of my house. Wow. And by the, this is actually, this is actually true. We were just talking about this. But I, this is might be the Canadian in me. Yeah. But there's a guy, and I live in like, not, by the way, not a, you know, some like dump, right? It's like Manhattan. <laughs> you're you're in a beautiful dump. part of Manhattan. Very yeah, I'm not uh, like, high real not estate. Not like yeah. wildly expensive, but yeah. it's, you know how New York is, right? And then outside my house, all these people like smoke crack. And then 
I noticed after doing this like three or four times that I'm very, when I walk by being like, Hey, sorry guys, like really sorry. I need to get by. And now I'm just like, why am I apologizing to these people? I'm smoking crack in my doorway. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're clearly pretty evil people because I, I was just thinking about the guy who bribed the woman to flash him with the McFlurry. Everybody, everyone who goes to McDonald's knows the McFlurry machine is always broken. So if you're offering a woman, that, that's that's dark, man. That's very deceitful. He's, that's his trick. He finds out when the McFlurry machine's broken and makes all these McFlurry deals. He comes back. No, I. Uh, so you're I, a junior cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, here's a fillet of fish. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't yeah. have anything. So you, That's hilarious. you move from Canada, you make it here to America. But now I got to ask. Most of my friends, I'm a New Yorker, born and raised. Most of my friends from New York. You're in Nashville now. I'm in yeah. Nashville. I left New York. I left LA. Now I'm living in the heart of the country. A lot of other people are. Are you now that you're an American? Are you gonna Are you gonna flee New York as well? Or are you gonna stick it out? No, New York's still the best place in the world for comedy. Um, I know a lot of every once in a while, unfortunately, like every everyone will always be like, actually, there's a comedy scene in you know Memphis. They like just pick a place, right? <laughs> yeah. But no, it's the di- the difference is insane. Like I do, you know, the stand in the Comedy Cellar and Brooklyn Comedy Club, and like these are, you know, the best comedians in the world. And yeah. Austin has a little pocket, you know, of 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 people, and every scene has a little pocket. But unfortunately, it's like there's nowhere where you could do five, six sets a night and really be, you know, there with the best of the best. So it's just like the same reason if you, you know, now it does shift. Like if you want to be in tech, like I think it used to be San Francisco. Now you can move to Austin and there's always people moving and shaking, but New York, as far as like art goes, as far as comedy goes, it's pretty back to normal. It's still Hmm. all, all of the people that, it, during COVID, we're like, I'm the hell out of here. I'm going to go, you know, this comedy scene. I'll be in Miami comedy scene. They're all slowly coming back one by one and being like, yeah, I mean, that's not really the same thing. So it's un- it's unfortunate. I mean, you know, it would be obviously better to live somewhere where you have a big, you know, house and it's warm. And But it's uh, unfortunate. I-, I even went to L.A. like recently and I'm just like, man, New York is better comedy is just what the situation is. So I moved here specifically for that reason. So I don't think that I would, I would leave for the next little bit unless uh, my life changed drastically and I gave up on, you know, trying to be the best of the best. But I think if you want to, if you're in this zone and you're in your years where you go, I want to try to be the best comedian in the world or one of the best comedians in the world, I think it's hard to properly do that somewhere else. Uh, You're probably right about that. So how, how is the reception? Obviously, you're super popular. You've got about a bazillion views on YouTube. But how how is your reception in Brooklyn or in Manhattan? You know, I'm not saying you're some like buttoned up tweed wearing bow tie conservative, but you obviously contradict a lot of the liberal orthodoxies that are. I think pol- every, I, I think I used to just think it is like masculine and feminine, like. But most mm. people are uh, like pretty receptive. Like, there's obviously people at every show, and this is I know I like. I know that over the last like little while, it was probably liberals that were the wild, but like, you know, there, there's, I would say it's depending on where I am. It's like hmm. there conservatives can be just as bad. It's just different topics. Right. Hmm. But like, and then there's people that, that are, there's always like a difference between like, you were trying to get mad and you know, right. you were trying to get mad and then you actually were mad because, you know, conservatives have their topics like, you know, pedophile jokes, like troop stuff. Like, yeah. obviously, some of that stuff can be very testy or but if, sometimes they will be like, I've, I've been where it's my fault, too, where you go do a show and, you know, maybe you're too, too wild. You're talking about, you know, se- even it could just be something similar as like sex stuff. And there's like an old bunch, like way too many old people in the crowd yeah. and and they didn't like it. And yeah. you could come up with and be like, yo. They're just afraid of real con, or you could be like, you know what? I went into that situation. I did it wrong. I but, didn't tailor it to right, right. But that's very, and not that you have to tailor it always, but like that's different than a bunch of old people saying like, hey, there's this comedy show where people are talking about sex. Let's go down there and like yeah. be mad. Right. So I think that, <laughs> you know, so it's it depends on where it is. But most comedy clubs, I think people are fairly receptive to anything that's funny. Definitely. I switch a little what I'm doing based on red states and blue states because I'm more my general like tone is to be against what I'm talking to. Right. It's kind of like <laughs> recipe for success. Just whatever yeah. the audience is, just find a way to piss them off. That's the, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really is. But I, I even think of it as like, think about it with your friends, like 
imagine you were hanging out with your friend and you're all making fun of him, but he's there. And then, or like mm. even your girlfriend or whatever, and then they leave and you're all making fun of him. And then some other people that don't know him that well are kind of making fun of him. You're like, well, you don't get to really do that. You're not his right. like, well, you, like you, you have to be pretty close to make fun of them when they're left. Right. So I kind of think of that the same comedy principle where it's like, mm. let's say I was doing like a really hard thing on LGBTQ or whatever. I wouldn't want to do that in front of a room of people that were, you know, actually thought gay people shouldn't get married. Had the, had the electrodes right in their hands. It was all just Mike Pence <laughs> yeah, with yeah, the yeah. electrodes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Straight yeah. up like gay therapy stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it also felt like it feels funner to even like, you know, let's say you're a trash and Trump like that feels way funner to do at places where they like him. Yeah. And if you go to somewhere where they hate him, like if they hate him, it feels like gross. If you know, you're just pandering at that point. So a lot of times point. my general uh, tone is to kind of make fun of, but don't, I even find that with like, uh, you know, like uh, even like TV shows or, or, or friend groups or like music genres, like let's say everyone's in, into punk, right? When everyone's into punk music and you get together, you don't generally talk about what's wrong with jazz. You right. kind of talk about what's wrong with your thing, right? <laughs> so I think that a lot of the stuff that I've been making fun of, even you know when people were getting wild in the Trump years, was like, I know these people and I yeah. grew up with them. And it's a bit me, to be honest. So I think there's kind of, uh, I try to have some of that stuff in the comedy or else it, it comes across as, um, you know, more propaganda and preachy it and right right that's a that's yeah. a great that's a great distinction a, a profound prophetic as usual distinction ryan i've t- already taken up too much of your time as i often do uh but <laughs> the, uh, i look forward to the next uh, great prophecy that you have i'm sure there will be many more uh, where can people find you if they haven't found you already um so i do a podcast every friday called the boys cast with ryan long um and there's a and patreon.com slash the boys cast and then also I do a video every Monday at youtube.com slash Ryan Long Comedy, and I'm releasing a stand-up special in January. Oh, also, I saw that uh, <laughs> right before I started, I saw you like this tweet, but do you see the Jordan Peterson in Nashville? <laughs> it's, Dude, he's going to become a woo-hoo girl on the back of one of those buses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I like Michaela, too. She's my friend, but it's so funny to me. Like, Jordan Peterson, like, every day he was posting, like, oh, look at this beer. Like, oh, bar is this much. He, he's, like, one step. He's just cruising around Nashville like he's on a bachelorette party. Like, he's one step away from having, like, Mardi Gras beats on. I was like, <laughs> you know, how funny it would be you're just, like, at a bar in Nashville getting, like, uh, like just drinking and stuff, and you look over, like, Jordan Peterson's on the dance floor. <laughs> That's so funny. It's one of <laughs> one of the premier public. This is, I'm, I'm not making a joke. This is just an actual description of what happened. One of the premier public intellectuals in the world was at Kid Rock's big ass honky tonk and rock and <laughs> yeah. roll steakhouse. That's that's great. I, I hope I run into it. <laughs> all right, go get. Uh, go, first right. of all, listen to the boys cast. It's awesome. It's really great. Uh, go watch all of Ryan's sketches. I look forward to the comedy special. And Ryan, I will see you soon. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Peace. 